What's up, everybody? It is Caleb here from the Game Glyph or the Caleb Riley Variety Channel. And I am here today to talk about something that I am very excited about, and it's Castlevania related. So if you're into Castlevania, this video is for you. And I would highly recommend staying around to the end of the video because I'm going to give you my very personal thoughts and ideas at the very end of this video, as well as other secrets too. So please stick around to the end. And if you do, I really appreciate it. So without further ado, it is Castlevania Dominus Collection. And I'm playing it on the Nintendo Switch, which for me is the way to play this game because I love playing Castlevania in handheld. And then being able to play this on a full screen is absolutely beautiful and an experience I didn't even know I needed it until it was available. In this collection, there are four games, not just three, but four. And let's talk about what those games are really quick before we go into each one. And I'm not going to give you very detailed reviews of each game. In fact, I would say let's look forward to that in future videos, as well as a future top 10 list of my favorite Castlevania games. Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow was the first game to come out on the Nintendo DS. Absolutely great game, sequel to Aria of Sorrow. Aria of Sorrow, excuse me. Portrait of Ruin, the sequel to Bloodlines, one of my favorite Castlevania games ever made, and then Order of Ecclesia. It's complete own thing, and to be totally honest with you, probably my third favorite in this entire compilation. Now, I did say four games are included, so what is that fourth game? Well, as per usual in the collections, there are some bonuses, and one of those bonuses is Haunted Castle Revisited. Haunted Castle Revisited is a remake and an HD reimagining of the arcade Japanese-made game Haunted Castle. And this game is really hard. It's designed to be a quarter muncher, but the remake of it is absolutely beautiful. And if you want to see what that looks like, that'll be the very last game I show on this video. You also get a gallery which shows amazing art from each game. Really beautiful art here, which you can go into and zoom into. Incredible, incredible artwork. And then one of my favorite things ever, which is Castlevania music, all in a very organized playlist. And you can actually make your own playlist for them and play them in this beautiful, beautiful media player. And then there's the options, which you can change the language and some of the control schemes. But let's not waste too much time dilly-dallying around, and let's go take a look at the actual games. So we're going to start in order that which they were released. And by that I mean, by that I mean on the, the DS itself. Here is Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. This game, again, is the sequel to Aria of Sorrow. It's an excellent game. And for me, I mean, I would have probably bought this, you know, standalone for the price they sold the whole compilation, which was $24.99 when I bought this game day of launch. This was a day one purchase for me. Out of all of them on this list, this has the most touchscreen gimmicks because, again, this was on the Nintendo DS, which was a touchscreen system. And so in this one, you use the touch screen to make these little seals. Now you can also, as you can see, move this little cursor around with the right joystick. And that can kind of do your sigils for you if you want. It is not the best way to do it. I would probably play it in handheld and just do them by hand. That, that works a little bit better. But as you can see, this is a perfect port of the game. And I love how on the right side of the screen, they didn't waste any real estate. And they just put your map which is nice to have up open all the time, which is one of the beautiful things about a uh, Nintendo DS is you had the dual screen. So on the bottom screen was the gameplay, on the top screen was either the map or the information uh, window that I call it that shows your character profile, your stats, and then whatever enemy you're fighting. And in this game, you play as Soma, who I'm not going to tell you who he is because I don't want to spoil it because there's a lot of you out there that have probably never played any of these games. And it was just released recently, even though this did come out a long time ago. I still think it'd be nice for you to experience this on your own. You absorb the souls of your enemies and you can use them as a form of attack. And that's really, really cool in my opinion. I'm gonna skip through the story sequences so you're not spoiled by that. And you actually really get a lot of items and a lot of spells in this game or a lot of souls. And there's a lot of variation and a lot of variety to this game. And right now I'm just throwing bones at people. I got that from the skeleton earlier, but each enemy has its own soul and its own items. So there's a lot going on. If you go to the options in this game, you can go in and equip all of these different things. You've got like your swords or your different melee attacks, your different clothes, your different accessories. And you can go to the souls and you have these various types of souls, right? So you have the ones that are more like attacks. You have the ones that are more like your R button that can enhance what you're doing, or they can also be attacks. And then you have your stat razors, your passive souls. 
these are actually really, really useful in the game. Now, I'm not gonna show too much of each game. I'm only gonna show these beginning sequences of most of them, because again, I want you guys to experience this game for yourself. It's very good. This is Dawn of Sorrow for the Nintendo DS on the Nintendo Switch in the Dominus Collection. Also, if you press Z at any time, you have these different options that are exclusive to this collection. You have control settings, then you have other settings where you can go in and actually change the background color, the screen settings, etc., etc. Also, you have a compendium for each game, which shows you animations for everything that's highlighted here. Enemies, items, equipment. Well, maybe it doesn't show you animation for each thing, but it does show you at least an image of it. But it does show you an animation for all the different spells and souls that you get, which is an absolutely beautiful touch. So let's go to the next game in the collection. And I might say, at least at this time, my personal favorite game in the collection, and really the reason why I wanted to buy this collection. It's kind of funny because when this first came out, this was not my favorite Castlevania game or one of my favorites. In fact, I did like Donna Sara in this time period more because it definitely seemed more like a spiritual successor to Symphony of the Night. I didn't know at the time that this game had so much to offer. I didn't know at the time that dual character system would be so fun. I didn't know that the art direction would grow on me more and more. Definitely seemed to influence the anime that came out on Netflix, which is amazing if you've never watched it. But again, this is the sequel to Bloodlines, so it kind of has the you know spiritual successor to that, if you will. In this game, you can play as either Jonathan or Charlotte, Jonathan, Charlotte, or both simultaneously, and you can switch back and forth. You have assist modes, you have these like ultimate attacks, these unity attacks, which are really, really cool and kind of screen clearing. And there's just a lot to this one. Instead of just having one you know main area that you explore that kind of expands beyond that, you have a hub world that you can travel in between, which is really, really cool. I just beat the boss of this right here. I'm not gonna tell you what that boss is. Let me skip past these demons. We have a lot of moves in this game because each character has their own items, has their own different types of sub weapons or spells if you're Charlotte, which is really cool. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by a hub world because via the name Portrait of Ruin, you'd think that would have something to do with portraits. Well, it very much does. So let me teleport back to the beginning of this level and kind of show you what they mean by that. And again, this game to me is just amazing. I would give this game a 9 out of 10 just by its own, but I'm going to give you a full detailed review as to why I feel that way about it in a future video that's dedicated just to Portrait of Ruin. This is a portrait of Dracula's Castle. So let's go back there. And as you can see, this game is a flawless port. Animation's good. It's pixel perfect. And the load times are essentially immediate, even faster than they were on the original DS. So we're back in Dracula's Castle and there are different portraits for each level of this game. And Dracula's Castle kind of acts as more of like a hub world in between these individual levels. And each level is very different. So this game has a lot of variety, and that's probably why as time has gone by, I like it so much. And again, there's just so much to this game, because if you go to the start menu, you can equip each character individually. And there's a, there's a lot. There's a lot of different items that each, each character gets. And this is Symphony of the Night level just for Jonathan Morris. Maybe not as many items. Then you have Charlotte, who has her own items, her own accessories, one and two, as well as her own spells. And the spells in this game are absolutely awesome. Absolutely awesome. What's kind of cool is you can talk between each other, which is just neat. And I love these two characters. I would love to know that they're going to make an anime just basically about Portrait of Ruin. And I'm not going to spoil the story for you. I'll do that in a future video where I dedicate that to this. Also, I wanted to say, I didn't say this in the Donasara portion, you can press select at any time and kind of switch what's above and what's below there on the right side, either your map or your, your character information screen. I, I tend to like that map on the bottom screen for some reason. It just, I don't know why, I just aesthetically like it more. But this game has a lot to explore because not only is Dracula's castle relatively expansive, not as much as maybe Donasaro, but also, I mean, each level itself that you unlock as far as the portraits that you go into, very, very expansive, and there's a lot of exploration in this game. In the Egovania era of Castlevanias, which are my personal favorite, the exploration is just a huge part of that, and I really enjoy that. And you unlock new skills and stuff that you can use together, like I can hop off her head, get to higher points. That's before we get the inevitable double jump, as well as you can use each other to kind of get to certain places, like I can hop off her head, and now she can't get here. That's okay. I can switch back and go this way if I needed to, you know, etc., etc. So Portrait of Ruin is an incredible game, and I don't want to give away too much in this video about that and about why, but trust me, the music, the graphics, everything in this game, really, really good. 
Let's go on to the next one. The most recent game released on the Nintendo DS, which a lot of people really love this game, and I, I do love it. And again, I would have bought, you know, I would have spent $25 just buying this individual game, and that's Order of Ecclesia. Order of Ecclesia is a very different game. And without going into it too much, the main character is awesome. The art direction is beautiful. It probably has the best pixel art as far as detail of really any of the games in this compilation. But there are certain things about it that kind of bottleneck my enjoyment for it. And that mileage may vary from person to person. I don't mind the story. The story is pretty cool. This one is a lot less bright and fun as Portrait of Ruin and even Dawn of Sorrow. But as you can see, the background graphics, the sprite graphics, I mean, they are just absolutely beautiful. And this one is different, too, because, you know, you went from having those two characters to the one character. And instead of the, there being spells and, and all these different items and stuff like that, I mean, there is items, right? But you don't really use weapons and spells the same way. Instead, you, you use these glyphs. And glyphs are kind of like Soma's souls, where you have an opportunity to get the glyphs that you can absorb from enemies as you fight them. Levels are distributed through this mapping system, like a world map, almost like, you know, a lot of other games, including Mario and previous Castlevania games. That's fine to me. I don't dislike that because you do have to do some backtracking in this game where you can go back and re-explore some things in the Metroidvania style that the Igavania games really, in my opinion, perfected. But this game just looks and sounds so beautiful. And again, I love Shinoa as a character. But I will go into specifically why there are things about this game that I like less than other games. But who knows? After I replay through all these games, I might like this one the most. I really don't know. I do plan on doing full playthroughs. Maybe not on my channel because I don't really tend to do that because that's like long form content. I may stream myself playing these games. But as far as like just playing through a whole game, I don't really have the technology to do that properly right now in a way that would be a good experience for the watcher. But I just wanted to show you guys that this is still a game that holds up over time and it has a lot to offer and I look forward to reviewing it in a later video. This is Castlevania Order of Ecclesia and this is what the collection was named after. The Dominus. Castlevania Dominus Collection. So we can go into that more about, you know, why it's called that and, and etc. in a future video. Again, this is Castlevania Order of Ecclesia, an absolutely excellent game. Let's go on to the fourth and final game I'm going to show in this video. And let me go ahead and kind of give a public service announcement. This is the second time I recorded this because, as per usual, <laughs> I'm not a professional and I made some mistakes. In the earlier video, there was, you just couldn't hear what I was saying at all because I had the game audio so loud. And the game audio is lovely, so I wanted to make sure there was a balance of both. So instead of showing you the original Haunted Castle, which came out, you know, in the arcade, and it's a great game. It's very short, but it's a quarter muncher. I'm gonna show you the revisited version, which is a full screen HD remake of that game. And this this is a, I mean, just a beautiful thing that they did for us. Um, I'm gonna start just in the beginning. It's cool that you can, you know, start at other points in the game. This is a very hard as nails game. This is probably one of the hardest Castlevania games ever made. There's Daddy Dracula coming to take your lady, Belmont. Uh-oh. And he's like too good to even pick her up. He's going to teleport, you know, her to him. But I digress. Let's show you the game. As you can see, it is absolutely gorgeous. Now, I think I have this enhancement mode that kind of blends the uh, pixel art. It kind of gives it this almost blurry look. In retrospect, I kind of wish I hadn't done that because this isn't really an emulation. I, I would prefer sharper pixels to, you know, to be even more apparent than this kind of blurred look that emulation can kind of give you. It's fine. Some people would prefer this mode. Some people would prefer the, you know, sharper, more pixelated mode that I would. I don't mind seeing those individual pixels. I think it's actually beautiful. I prefer 2D pixel art games over really any kind of game that exists. And as you guys probably know, I love Castlevania. I would go so far as to say it's my favorite game series of all time, and it probably always will be. And I hope to God they come back and make some new Castlevania games in this style. I don't know how they would do it without Igayashi. I always say his name wrong, so we just call him Iga. Um, but he, to me, is what made this game series so awesome, so gothic, and just so Victorian. But he didn't really have anything to do with this game, obviously. But this game is still a really good game that is worthy of you playing. As you can see, the graphics are awesome. The music's awesome. 
The, the combat is very, like, traditional Castlevania. It plays a lot and looks a lot like... I would honestly say, <laughs> in this, vo this mode, it looks a lot like Dracula X on the Super Nintendo. And it, it kind of reminds me graphically a little bit of Castlevania 4. Maybe a blend of those two games. This is a lovely game. Highly recommend you giving it a play. I would like to think that I could beat this game eventually. I, I'm sure it's very short, being that it's an arcade game. But again, it's hard as nails, because arcade games were designed to eat your quarters. Just like console games back in the day for the Sega and Super Nintendo were designed to make you rent them over and over again. Gotta get those residuals. But this was Haunted Castle, and this is in the Castlevania Dominus Collection. I'm playing it on the Nintendo Switch. Now, let's get to the important part of the video. How would I rate this collection? I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I would give this collection an 11 out of 10. I am so excited that this exists. This to me is an absolute love letter because I love that era. The Game Boy Advanced era was really good and the Advanced Collection is great. Don't get me wrong. I would say out of that entire collection, Aria of Sorrow is absolutely the best one and worth the admission. Harmony of Distance is cool. Um, Circle of the Moon is like really cool, but you can completely like OP your character very early in that game in the um, kind of like the, the card system that that game has. This game, this game compilation is like very balanced for the most part. Um, I would say out of all three of them, definitely Order of Ecclesia is the most difficult. And for a multitude of reasons, we'll go in on that in a future video. For me, Portrait of Ruin is absolutely the outlier is the best game that held up over, you know, a long course of time. Like I love this game and I look forward to playing through it and hope that they make an anime about it. Now, as I told you to wait till the end of this video, let me tell you why. I'm gonna give you my thoughts about what I want from Konami next. Cause Konami, like, regardless of what you say, they do love their fans. I know they haven't made a new Castlevania game with Iga and they need to. Cause he made Bloodstained and I made a video about Bloodstained and I need to make a new one. I keep saying that because the PS4 version of that game is actually awesome. The Switch version is hot garbage. But get that guy back and let him do the Ronda of Blood or the Dracula X or whatever you want to call it compilation it has Symphony of the Night, my favorite Castlevania game of all time, as you guys know. I've probably said that in a million videos. I've played that game a ton of times. And Ronda of Blood, I want the original version, not the PSP 3D remake of that. I hated that. I hated how it looked and played. I just bought that so I could get the Symphony of the Night port, which had some of the stuff that was from the Japanese version, which I really liked. But give us a compilation, like the Ronda compilation, whatever you want to call it. And then give us the 3D collection. Give us that later. You know, because I would love to replay Castlevania 64, maybe Castlevania Curse of Darkness on the PlayStation 2. Like, please, give me all those games. Lament of Innocence. I love the 3D games. I don't care what anybody says. I think they're actually awesome. Even though Curse of Darkness kind of ended the series, it was the last real big budget, real canon Castlevania game in this era before they made, in my opinion... I will not even mention them, the Gabriel Belmont ones where he was Dracula on the PS3 and the Xbox, I believe, and also on the PC. I, I, I played those games. Those are not really Castlevania games to me. They are just Konami God of War games. They're, they're fine. I mean, yeah, Patrick Stewart, you know, did the voiceover uh, narration for the first one, but I digress. Those are the lowest point. I would rather play the original Game Boy version. I'd rather play the unfinished Dreamcast game. Castlevania Resurrection than either of those two games. But I would love to get all the real Castlevania games on the Nintendo Switch since the Nintendo Switch is the port monster. So I would give this entire collection an 11 out of 10. That's right. I'm giving it over a 10 because it has more than I expected. It has all three games, perfect ports, every option that you could possibly want and more. It has the extras. It's got the game I wasn't expecting, Haunted castle it's got a remastered remade version of haunted castle which i mean nobody would have expected that and then it has this beautiful gallery which you can go in and look at all the amazing artwork and it is truly amazing and then it has this amazing like media player it's got all the music you can sit and listen to it and make your own playlist it's incredible and all the settings and stuff that you know i don't really care about i may change the japanese versions of the voiceovers but honestly i don't mind the corny dubbing i kind of grew up in that era and that's what you're used to but this was Castlevania Dominus Collection, a beautiful, beautiful compilation of some of the peak Castlevania games. Definitely the peak Egovania Castlevania games. Love it. Love this series. Let me know what you think below. My favorite in the series, is, at least at this time, is definitely Portrait of Ruin. 
Tell me below what you think of that game. Tell me why you like some of the other games maybe more. I would love to have a lot of conversations about Castlevania. Let me know what your favorite one is. Let me know what you think of the remake of Haunted Castle. Maybe let's all work together in getting Symphony of the Night and Rondo of Blood ported to the Nintendo Switch. There's a ton of ports of both of those games. There's really no reason why that couldn't happen. They're not system locked to anything. I mean, I would dare say it'd be nice if they were slowly working on a remastered 2D sprite version with Iga of Symphony of the Night, maybe redoing that Japanese version that on the Sega Saturn that had more. It was kind of like a DLC, you know, added to in that version that most people didn't even play, doesn't even know existed, where Maria is a playable character. I'm pretty sure on the PSP there was kind of like an enhanced version that they used for that. Let's at least get that on the Nintendo Switch. I would be satisfied with just a simple PlayStation port. I don't even care. Run it on an emulator. I just want to be able to play it. I want all of them on here. And then, yes, of course, it'd be great to get the PlayStation 2, Xbox era, play, uh, Castlevania games, Lament of Innocent and Curse of Darkness. But before I just keep ranting and gushing anymore, I better end this video right here. As you guys can tell, I love Castlevania, and I particularly love this collection. This is my favorite collection out of all of the Castlevania's collections, which there are three that have come out. This is just a love letter. And the fact that I could play Castlevania 1 through Order of Ecclesia on my Nintendo Switch, they're all installed. They're all there right now. Yes, I love that. And finally, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you. And I have an idea, an invention for Konami. If you're listening to this, Konami... Can we get a physical release of all three collections for the Nintendo Switch on one cartridge so they're all playable and you don't have to install them? Even though the file sizes are not that large, that would just be so freaking cool to have just a master collection, like a Castlevania master collection. In fact, if you do that and, and you only add one thing to it, let it be Symphony of the Night. And there I leave you. This has been Castlevania Dominus Collection for the Nintendo Switch. It's available on all major platforms. It is a day one purchase, an 11 out of 10 experience. I love it. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And until next time, bye!